In this video, we're going to look at how to scale up ratios. Now, scaling up ratios is basically the opposite of simplifying them. So if you're not sure how to simplify ratios, it's probably worth checking out our video on that first. To quickly recap though, if we take a ratio like 6 to 9, which could represent blue cubes to red cubes, for example, then to simplify it, all we do is look for the biggest factor that 6 and 9 have in common, which is 3. And then we divide both of them by that number. So we do 6 divided by 3 to get 2, and 9 divided by 3 to get 3. So our simplified version is 2 to 3. Scaling up is just the opposite of this. So going from a more simple ratio, like 2 to 3, and multiplying both sides to get a less simple ratio, like 6 to 9. For example, we could also scale up to 20 to 30, because that would just mean multiplying both sides by 10, or up to 300 to 450, by multiplying both sides by 150. The important thing to remember though in all these cases is that when you scale up or simplify like this, all the ratios that you get are equivalent. So 20 to 30, 2 to 3, 300 to 450, all of these ratios mean the same thing. Now, when it comes to your exams, what they'll normally do is only give you one of the scaled up values and get you to work out the other one. For example, they could ask, a pile of cubes contains blue and red cubes in the ratio of 2 to 3. If there are 10 blue cubes, how many red cubes will there be? So the way that I would do this is I'll take the ratio 2 to 3 that we were given, and then I'll take the number 10 and put it underneath the number 2, because the left side of our ratio refers to how many blue cubes we have. Then to work out how many red cubes we'd have, we're basically trying to work out the value of this number. To do this, we need to think what would we have to multiply 2 by to get to 10, which would be 5, because 2 times 5 is 10. And this means that we also have to multiply the 3 by 5 as well, to find that there will be 15 red cubes. As another example, let's try a similar question, but with the cubes in the ratio of 4 to 7. And where the question asks us, if there are 56 red cubes, how many blue cubes will there be? So this time, we've taken down our ratio 4 to 7, and we need to put the 56 under the 7, because the red cubes are on the right side. Next, we need to figure out what 7 has to be multiplied by to get to 56, which is 8. And so this tells us that we also have to multiply the 4 by 8, which will give us 32. So there would be 32 blue cubes. Another thing they could ask is something like, if there are 24 blue cubes, how many cubes will there be in total? So for questions like this, it helps to break it down into two separate steps. First, we need to work out how many red cubes there will be. And second, we can add the number of blue cubes and red cubes together to find the total number of cubes. So first of all, we take our ratio of 4 to 7, place the 24 underneath the 4, because we have blue cubes on the left, and figure out what it's been multiplied by, which is 6. So we know we need to multiply the 7 by 6 as well, to find out that there will be 42 red cubes. And then our final easy step is just to add the 24 and the 42 together to find that there must be 66 cubes in total. Before we finish, let's try one slightly different question. Jennifer is following a smoothie recipe that says to use 14 blueberries, 2 bananas and 3 apples. If she wanted to use 6 bananas instead, how many blueberries and apples should she use? So this one's a little bit different because we have three things rather than two. But the technique that we use is almost exactly the same. So we start by writing out that we have blueberries, bananas and apples. 
and then below each one, we can put how many the recipe asks for. So 14 to two to three, which is our ratio. Then because she wants to use six bananas rather than two, we place a six beneath the two. At this point, it works just like all the other examples we've done. So because we have to scale up the two to a six, we're going to have to multiply it by three, which tells us that we're also going to, have to multiply the apples and blueberries by three as well. Another way to think about this is that she needs three times as much of everything because she's basically making three times as much smoothie. So we'd do 14 times three to find out that she needs 42 blueberries and three times three to find out that she needs nine apples. Anyway, that's everything for this video. So hope you found it useful. If you did, then please do tell your friends and teachers about us. And thanks for watching.